Uh, obviously, yeah, we're down here for Comic Con, uh, and we, you know, we've been uh, we kind of last year I think was our first year back at the show, and this year we've got a booth on the show floor, but we've also got this lounge at the Marriott where we're showing off Zelda and, and a whole bunch of other games. So Excellent. Great. And so we're showing it off today, and we're jumping actually directly into a boss fight, so we don't want to miss this little setup here, uh, the dramatic reveal of Girahim. Girahim? Yes. Pretty That's right. sinister looking fellow. Yeah, and this is, uh, actually this boss battle serves kind of a few different roles. Um, the game starts out obviously with uh, Skyloft, with it, which is the, the land above the clouds. Okay. Um, and Link ends up uh, dropping down in search of, uh, of Zelda, who has fallen down below the clouds. Uh, and he kind of is working his way along. And, and up until this point, you would have gotten maybe a hint that there was sort of someone shadowing you mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. But uh, this is your first encounter with... Uh, with Girahim, who kind of calls, him, calls himself the uh, the demon or the, the lord that rules the land beneath the clouds. The land beneath the clouds. Right. Yeah, now if you folks watched our E3 demo, we featured uh, the bird riding, which mm -hmm. took place. You sort of leapt off that sky loft and That's right. soared through the air. Um, and then we sort of talked then about how Skyloft served as sort of a ju another jumping off point. This mm -hmm. is just going to be puns all demo That's long. Right. Is that okay? <laughs> That's fine. Uh, where, that allows you to access different areas of the world beneath the clouds. That's right. It's, a, it's kind of a, a dual-tiered world, and actually the, the scope of it is, is pretty amazing. I think when people get in and start exploring the overworld down below, they're going to be impressed with, with just how vast it is compared to, I think, past Zelda games. Um, but you, you use the, um, the, the world up above the clouds, Skyloft, Mm -hmm. um, you kind of soar around on the birds. There's floating islands out there for you to discover uh, that you can explore and, and find kind of treasures and, and even people on some of those floating islands. And then you also have points from up above where you can drop down below to the world down below and access the different areas. To the world below where now, obviously we meet Girahim down here. Are there other folks, I mean, that you meet along the way? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's uh, this certainly... This talks a good game and he definitely has the psychological warfare going he's, for him. Yeah, he's <laughs> certainly one of the, uh, the creepier bosses that we've seen in the Zelda game. Uh, one of the other things that I think is, is actually great about this is this is this comes at the end of the first dungeon, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it illustrates to a certain degree how the, the Zelda team is, has looked at trying to do something different with the game this time and kind of break away from the traditional Zelda mold. Okay. So this is actually um, you know one of the rare cases where you don't use the item found in the dungeon to defeat the boss. Uh, it's strictly uh, it's a sword on sword battle. And, and you if you notice what without a sword, yes, here. he just uh, he's he's certainly uh, he's got some skills. He can uh, you watch his hand and he can grab Link's sword, catches it between his two catches fingers. it between his fingers, and then if uh, yeah, and if you don't get it back out of there, then he'll he'll steal the sword from Link and use it against you. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty. He seems very uh, cocky. He's certainly got some attitude. Yes. <laughs> And uh, definitely in, into diamonds as sort of an aesthetic <laughs> thing, uh, could, could we say? Yeah. So what's interesting here is you've you've kind of gotten the idea that he's been following you, and, and that the the intro to this he certainly makes it clear that he is pursuing uh, Zelda as well. Mm -hmm. um, and and it kind of he meets you in this room, and, and both of you have this sense that Zelda is in in the next room beyond. Uh, but uh, he's, he kind of decides that it's time for him to put a stop to what you're trying to do. And, it's never um, been and you get in this, it. of course, of course. Uh, and so you get in this fight with him, and if, uh, if we can, uh, we'll see. But if you watch, he'll, uh, he'll kind of he'll hold his hand in the air, and you'll have to figure out a way using, of course, Wii Motion Plus and the one-to-one -one sword control, how you get around that. Yeah, if you, you know, for folks who've seen Zelda in action before, Usually when he's sort of poised in a boss fight, his sword is back, he's in this action stance, but now we're seeing, you know, we're seeing that sword move around as the demo or mm -hmm. repositions his remote to, to get a better angle. That's right, and it, uh, it, matches, it matches your position in space, so if you're holding your hand out here, Link's going to be holding his hand out here, it mm -hmm. follows your hand around, um, and it matches your angle. Uh, the other thing that's, I think, really nice about the game is they've done a, a great job of, of giving players a variety of different ways to, to tackle a situation. Okay. Um, in this case, uh, there's a few different things you can do, and there's an example of if you use the nunchuck and shake your, your nunchuck out, mm -hmm. Link will shake his shield out, and if you do that at the right moment, you can block his attack and kind of knock him back. Um, another option is if you, you time a spin attack just right as he comes at you, and you have to do it from the proper side. Uh, you can cut across him as he's trying to cut you, and you can and, and attack him that way. Oh, cool! Yeah. 
So, I mean, you guys, you know, with the Wii Motion Plus, you're really, it seems, you know, you're trying to make it so sword play is a lot uh, richer, a lot more deep in terms of what, what kind of tactics you can employ. Right. And it's not, it's not just for the, the sake of, of leveraging Wii Motion Plus. What they've gone, what they've done is they've gone through the game and they've woven that into to every combat situation that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think it would be kind of safe to say that in half Zelda games, um, the enemies weren't really so much of a, a challenge when you met them out in the overworld or, or in a dungeon unless they were like a boss or kind of a mid-boss. Mm -hmm. They were really just kind of an obstacle that you would bam, 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 cut through. Yeah, you sort of figure, your out, figure that, you yeah. know, block that thing and then swack, swack, swack. Right, and now what they've done is with the, uh, specifically taking advantage of the, the sword control and, and Wii Motion Plus is they've really built in uh, a system that, that almost turns the combat itself into puzzle solving. Uh, and of course, puzzle solving is what the Zelda series is really well known for. True enough. Um, and they've also, on that front, gone through and, and woven that into the overworld as well. So now even just the process of getting to a dungeon almost feels like going through a dungeon because there's, there's so much puzzle solving to do in the exploration of the overworld as well. All right. I mean, so Skyward Sword, you know, first New Zelda game on the Wii since Twilight Princess. So you guys are fixing to make this a big one. Oh yeah, it sounds like it's <laughs> it is yeah. We'll be talking more about kind of the the scope of the game and and some more of the detail of the story, but uh, it's it's certainly going to be a, a very large game. It's going to be a lot of content for people to enjoy. Um, and even here at Comic Con, we we did release an updated version of the E3 trailer that uh, kind of gives you a little more insight into some of the characters in Skyloft. I think we threw a little hint of a Goron out there as well for, oh, the, for the long time, long time Zelda fan. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. Now, and and that trailer also shows off the game's art style, which right. is, it, you know, it's always kind of tough to nail down a description of a Zelda game art style unless mm -hmm. it's you know, Wind Waker cell, sort of cell shading or you know the the more realistic Twilight Princess. Mm -hmm. This is almost a. It's got this painterly quality almost to it. Yeah, they very much uh, took some inspiration from, from classical kind of impressionist paintings, uh, particularly with a, a watercolor influence. And you'll see a lot of that, um, particularly in Skyloft, mm -hmm. um, and also to a certain extent down below where you have kind of these sweeping vistas and you can see out in the distance and there's this, this really nice watercolor filter over the background. Um, but uh, a lot of that was... Uh, and you I know, gotta say, that's a cool looking heart. That is a cool looking yeah. heart. <laughs> That is definitely a satisfying get. Um, and so the, uh, the team, you know, I think particularly because of the, the Skyloft setting and, and kind of the blue sky, felt that that was, that was going to be a nice mesh there. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also see how with the, uh, the closer up, the dungeon uh, and whatnot, um, it still has a little bit of that kind of cell shaded look of, of, uh, of Wind Waker blended with the realism of Twilight Princess. Yeah. Uh, Sort of an evolution of the art styles, you know, that yeah. has been seen before. That's now right. Now we're actually going to take a peek into the dungeon. Uh, but before we go there, Chuck, what's on your shirt here? Because this oh, is, you know, this is a uh, this is actually a uh, 20th anniversary T-shirt that was done in Japan for the Legend of Zelda series. Very cool. Uh, and of course, this year is the 25th anniversary uh, of the Legend of Zelda. That one's been sitting in the drawer for a while. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Brought it out just for you guys. Excellent. We appreciate it. So this is this here is an example of, of how the combat has kind of evolved. Whereas before, you know, typically you would just swing your sword at an enemy, and and, and that would be enough to, to damage the enemy or hurt them. In this case, you've got to figure out how to how to uh, fight the spider in a way that gets you access to its weak point. Get him to kind of rear up on you. Yeah, um, and you've also got you know you see a spider there on screen that's hanging from a thread, um, and in this case you can use your item uh, to you could either let's see if he's going to do this. Yeah, he's going to come over here, cut the thread, drop the spider down, and then he can run and, and fight it the same way he just did that last spider. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is if it's, if it's still on the thread, uh, then you can, there's ways that you can kind of spin the spider around if you're using your sword properly to then get access to the I actually the, got a chance to try uh, this demo at E3, and that's exactly what I did. The spider was still on the thread, and I yeah. went up and just took a whack at it. But then it was like this tetherball thing where it just kind of swung out and then, oh my God, it's swinging yeah. back at me. And like I had to dodge out of the way and I'm still trying to get access to it, but it's, it's spinning and, it's, and it was swinging around in like such a realistic way. It had, you know, it wasn't just hit it and it swings back and forth, right. you know, like Ocarina of Time style. It was, right. it was all around and I had to really sort of figure out, oh, okay, this is not, not quite as going as I planned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this is the same dungeon that we showed at E3, but I think what, what a lot of people don't really realize is that, is that we were plopping people right down in the middle of the dungeon. There was a whole section of the dungeon that came before this mm -hmm. that nobody got to see yet. 
Um, no kidding. Yeah, and uh, and and even starting in uh, at this point in the dungeon and playing all the way through the demo, I, I think there weren't a whole lot of people that actually got to the end of the dungeon. Uh -huh. uh, so even the dungeons themselves, I think, are are probably a lot more intricate and, and probably a little bit larger than you've seen in some of the past. More games. intricate, more puzzle solving, more immersive combat. I mean, you're like hitting all the right buttons here, bro. I'm really excited about this game. Uh, another thing I noticed about the dungeon when I was playing is this foliage that's around. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, and you know, foliage is, is no new thing to Zelda, but it's, a lot of it feels like it's, um, it's not that you're not going to chop it and get a potion or a heart. It's, it's uh, ornamental, it's to, to increase the ambiance of the level. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like these environments are much, are very rich. They are, they are. And uh, I think if you've, if you've played, you probably also noticed that, uh, you know, even when you're trying to cut through that grass and expecting, you know, items and, you know, Deku seeds and hearts to pop out, uh -huh. they're not popping out as frequently as maybe they used to in the past. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. They're, and But I like the mushrooms too, They that's a fun place to like just sort of flex your Wii Motion Plus. Yes. Because you cut them and they don't, it just sort of, it scars very quickly mm -hmm. and then it heals back up and so you can chop all sorts of different angles and see that it actually really works well. Oh, yeah. hello. Who is this lady? Uh, this is uh, this is Phi. So one of the things that we have talked a little bit about is that uh, Skyward Sword uh, sort of tells the story of the creation of the Master Sword, which is, has long been the kind of weapon that Link uses. The iconic. Uh, the iconic yeah. sword. So it, uh, this is this is the story of, of how that sword was created, and, and Phi is the spirit that sort of guides Link along his adventure. And so she just sort of, you know, appears, disappears. She's got magical powers. That's cool. Uh, she, well, she's actually, she is the, the spirit of the sword, so she's housed in the sword. Oh, so she's yeah. sort of coming along with you. Mm -hmm. She's along with you, so, and you'll actually get, uh, you may notice at times when the, uh, the, the hilt of the sword, if it's on your back, will start blinking as a kind of a, to give you an indication that she's got something to share with you. Or, does the sword say, yeah. hey, listen? Yes, yeah, she does not. <laughs> she does not say, hey, listen. <laughs> but she, now the thing I noticed about her is that she also had a very prominently featured diamond on her chest. Mm -hmm. So some connection maybe between her and Girahim? 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 Uh, that's, that's an interesting observation. We might have to play the game oh, a little more you. to figure, you, figure that out. <laughs> You're astute. <laughs> you know, and, that, and that's the, the cool thing, is it pays to be observant because mm -hmm. there's, there's stuff to see and there's stuff that is yeah. visually connected. Now here you also see uh, the, the Wii Motion Plus being used not only for the sword combat, uh, but also for all the items. You know, yep. you've seen, uh, you've seen Link fly his beetle around. Um, the beetle, you you also use Wii Motion Plus to steer and control that. Uh, for the bow, you're also using your pulling back, your aiming. Um, oh, it's the pullback as well. The, yeah, the pullback, uh, right. Combo. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's really just added a great great deal of realism to the game, and and I think it, I think it just is fantastic the way it really feels like it's put Link's items in your hands. Now the beetle is obviously a new one here for Skyward Sword, but before we wrap up, is there? I mean. You know, that that item wheel that we've seen a few times has mm -hmm. a lot of empty spots. There are a lot of empty spots. Do uh, you want to tell us about one other item that maybe a question mark there that you want to tell us that's about? A, that's a good question, but uh, I don't think I don't think we're no, ready to No, not today, yeah. Bill. Not All today. Right. Fair enough. Uh, but Fair what enough. I what I can say though is uh, what what we have done with the game this time that's I think a little bit different is they've built an entire upgrade system into mm -hmm. the game. So, uh, for example, right now you can see that Link has kind of his traditional sealed, uh, but you he actually will get a lot of different shields in the game, and you'll start off with a very basic one. Okay. Um, and then as you as you fight enemies, uh, you'll recover kind of these these little treasures or or kind of artifacts that you then use as the resources uh, to upgrade your items. Nice. Um, and you can do that with, with the shield, you can do that with uh, the beetle and, and some of the other uh, items that you have uh, where you're able to kind of combine your, your collection of rupees and your collection of these resources and, and improve the items that you have. Well, I think if we talk about this game anymore, my, like, how badly I'm coveting it right now will just rise to dangerous levels. So I think we should wrap <laughs> the demo up. Okay. Uh, Bill, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, Obviously, very hotly anticipated, especially in this area of the world. Um, when's it coming out? Coming out this holiday. This holiday? Yep. Okay, I can probably wait that long. Thank okay. you so much for coming by. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. All right, folks. Now, uh, you saw Homer interviewing some Mass Effect cosplayers a little earlier, and we've got Mass Effect 3 on the show later today. But coming up next, we're checking out another Bioware game, Dragon Age 2, and the latest DLC for that one. Let's take a look.
Hey folks, Homer Barra back here at the EA booth at the Hilton in the Gaslamp District for Comic-Con 2011. I have happened upon the...